Hi guys and welcome back to another video and today we're going to be looking at whether the S8 Active is worth it in late 2020, early 2021. So if you're new, definitely consider hitting that subscribe button and if you like this video, definitely hit that thumbs up button. So diving right into this phone, the S8 Active was introduced in August of 2017 and it is the active line meaning that it is a more durable phone. It's for the people that have a more I guess rough occupation or are much more clumsy like myself. I dropped my phone like you would not believe and I've had so many phones break on me to the point where I kind of got angry and got a phone that wouldn't break. So this has a Gorilla Glass 5 display and not only that it has several other protective uh, factors that help it not break, not crack and not even get scuffs. So we're going to get into all of that. We'll look at some specs and we'll look at whether it's worth it in late 2020 and early 2021. So let's get right into it. First, looking at the phone, we have four bumpers on the side, which is one of my favorite features of this phone. And not only that, you could remove them with a small Ellen wrench and replace them if they get worn out. Now, that's absolutely fantastic. I love that. If you get it scratched and you don't like scratches on your phone, you could pair up, you could order another pair of bumpers from Amazon and get your phone good as new. It also has a bit of a bumper in front of the screen. It has a couple of mil, I don't want to say a couple, but a few millimeters that just protect it against the screen. So just in case it lands uh, face downward, you still won't crack your screen or even scratch it because it's lifted above the ground. The only reason you would scratch your screen is if there's a small pebble and it lands directly on the pebble. In that case, you might either scratch your screen or even crack it. On the front here, we have a front face camera, which is a eight megapixel camera. So it does offer decent quality images. We also have the speaker up here for phone calls. And then we have the main speaker down here, which I kind of don't like because when I'm watching the videos in landscape mode like this, you kind of tend to cover up the speaker and it is one of those phones where if the speaker is at all covered, you cannot hear a thing. So because it is waterproof, when you press or actually accidentally put your finger on the speaker, you will not hear. One thing I do love though is on the back, we still have a headphone jack for this phone. So you could still plug in your headphones if you run at a battery. And then obviously you have a USB type C and a microphone down, down here. Moving toward the bottom, we have a fingerprint scanner, heart rate monitor, flashlight, and a 16 megapixel camera on the back. So pretty decent quality stuff for 2017. It was near flagship. However, this phone was not the flagship in 2017. It was the Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus. This doesn't have the software equivalent to the S8 Plus. I believe the S8 Plus was housing a Snapdragon 845 at the time, and this is only housing at 835. It also only has four gigabytes of RAM as opposed to the six uh, the S8 Plus has, but it still functions really, really quite well. One of the things that I found is the dual touch on this phone isn't as responsive as I would like. So if I'm playing heavy games such as Call of Duty Mobile or PUBG, this really won't work out for me because those are split second games and if you mess up, you're most likely going to die. So I don't play Call of Duty Mobile on here for that reason. Other than that, you could use it on a day-to-day -day basis if you're a grown adult and you just want a really durable phone because you're in a tough occupation or you just tend to drop it a lot. It'll still work out absolutely amazing for you in watching videos, in making calls, and doing all the necessary stuff. It's just that it won't do gaming at the best rate because of the inresponsiveness for dual touch and it doesn't support the latest chip. The current chip I believe that is in flagship devices is the 865 plus which is 30%, 35% faster than this chip but it really doesn't matter on a day to day basis if you're not really testing the phone which most people do not. One thing I really like about this device is its massive battery however. This thing has a 5000 milliamp hour battery and it will easily last you throughout the day even if you use it like pretty 
uh, vigorously and pretty roughly throughout the day, it will last you the entire day. It has a 5.8 inch display. One of the things I dislike is it does have quite large bezels, but when you're buying a durable phone, you have to kind of sacrifice in some areas and the screen size from the top and the bottom is kind of where you had to sacrifice. Now, one of the things that people disliked about this active phone as opposed to the predecessors is it doesn't have any buttons on the front. It's completely touchscreen and the people that were in more durable occupations and had their hands dirty uh, didn't like that because they couldn't press the buttons to get around the home screen. If you have clean hands and you don't work in a tough occupation and you're just a bit clumsy, this phone will be absolutely fantastic for you. So speed wise, it's decently quick if you're not using it for heavy games it will last you through the day and it has a really really nice battery speakers are quite loud but you do tend to cover them as i said but is it worth it in 2021 that's the big question and my answer to that is yes it is it has certain elements that most phones don't have nowadays the primary one being durability. There is no legitimate better phone for durability uh, aside from the perhaps the Moto Z2 Force which was roughly the same, uh, same time as this and it roughly has the same specs as this but it is a Motorola phone and most people do prefer Galaxy phones over Motorola phones. Currently you could get it uh, for about, I want to say 200 on Amazon or 200 to 250. It isn't terribly expensive and it is pretty good. I've dropped it many, many times. It has all kinds of scuffs on it, scratches on it. If you could see those right there, but it still lasts me amazingly and it still performs for 90% of the stuff I want it to. One thing I find to be kind of agitating is the Bixby button on the side, however. The Bixby button just annoys me because I sometimes press this by mistake and by sometimes I mean every single day uh, and it just bugs the heck out of me and I want to get rid of it. Um, but aside from that, this phone is definitely worth the purchase if you want a decently priced durable phone in 2020 but anyways guys that's all i have for you guys today i hope you guys liked this video if you did hit that thumbs up button if you like this type of content in general hit that subscribe button as well as the post notification bell and other than that i will let you go thank you guys so so much for watching and i hope you have an amazing day